contact! How deep can you plunge into the darkness? Through the dark veil of space time. I wish we could have joined you sooner. This is your killer! Time is short. There is much to be done. The wait ends now. Right, we are back at the Warp Chatter podcast, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. We're still, we're still all inclusive. We, it's, we, we didn't mention that, but it's, it hasn't changed. This is the Warp Chatter podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to talking about the Horus Heresy Legion's digital card game, Horus Heresy lore, Warhammer Forty Thousand, everything that that encompasses. I am your host, Scuff D. This is a podcast by players four players and before we introduce our guest today uh who is a player uh just a quick shout out and thanks to everybody who has stuck along listened to all these episodes i think this is ep- this is episode 55 i believe maybe 54 Five was last week and it's 56 then yeah so yeah. we're up there baby Again, as always, if it, it is an open invitation to be on the Warp Chatter podcast, so if you enjoy Legions, or there's parts of it that you don't enjoy, but you'd like to be on, uh, you have a basic uh, ability to, to, to speak English, so we don't need a translator, I'd like to have you on and introduce and, and meet players. We've met a lot of players across the world, throughout the game, of all skill levels, it doesn't matter if you're a casual, if you're a returning player, old player, event player, ladder player, practice player, uh, a player who doesn't like to play. That's kind of an odd player, but I mean, why not? So they're just to, to, they exist. They do we exist. Know them. <laughs> I, have, I talk with several of them every day. Or players who swear that they don't, they they shouldn't play the game anymore, and you have to ask, well, then why? Why? But uh, all that aside, if you would like to be on, it is always an open invitation, so just hit me up, um, and I'll get you on the schedule right now. I think we're still out about two or three weeks um, going through the Faction Spotlight, but we also cover all the updates for the community events, game patches, and all that stuff. If you've been listening, you know what we talk about. And if this is your first time listening, well, gosh, welcome. I'm surprised, and at the same time, uh, happy that we would still be getting new listeners this deep in. Actually, I would like to continue to get new listeners. I mean, make no mistake about it, but this is an odd spot yeah. for you to jump in. So, yeah. So well, to go. be fair, with the podcast format, most people don't go back to episode one and then listen to all of it. I think they, they shouldn't. I mean, some of the yeah, some of the episodes, I mean, we're talking about balance patches that happened well, yeah. over a year ago. But, yeah, our example too. Well, going back would be kind of iffy. Yeah, there are some there are some good episodes that I think hold up in general, uh, and obviously some some guest discussions. And we have some guests that always cycle back around. Which we've got one such guest today. Uh, Axel May, the Crab co-host, has returned this week. He has broken the, the through. Warp storms. Yes, the warp storms have parted. You've got four extra crab appendages tonight, so you actually have six All arms. Right. It is kind of scary. It, they hurt. You've been there for two. Uh, you might have to cut some off. That's not an option. Yeah, you, you, listen. Punished. If you dip yourself in butter, uh, you can make huh. it work. He has a good point. Hey, that's right. Do you think? Do you think demon claws uh, taste like crab? Like if you dip them in butter? I, now, they, chaos has a scent, and it scents like uh, smells like cinnamon. So I like to imagine it's like a cinnamon bun. Hmm. Okay. Okay, like a sticky bun, like a sticky bun claw? Yeah, 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 yeah. So instead of a bear claw, it's a crab claw? Yeah, and now they say that a lot, I don't know how I'd feel about that, but yeah. All right. You know, that's why we don't see too many cops in the war, because the uh, chaos makes sure that they don't... That's right, listen, don't want you eating our our crab claws like, like they're donuts. Uh, I, with can't, us, I can't blame him if they do. No. Uh, with us once again is Automatic Jack joining the podcast. What's up, guys? Hello. And uh, despite our ramblings, we we did mention chaos. We are going to be talking about the Ruin Storm today. A faction spotlight focused on the Ruin Storm faction, the faction comprised entirely of demons and chaos entities. Um, of the three pantheons, not the fourth pantheon, and we might talk about that a little bit. We shall get to that point uh, shortly, but before we do, Automatic Jack, tell us about yourself for those who might have missed the last time that you were on. Sure. Well, thanks for having me, guys. I'm a big fan of the game. I've been playing now uh, for about a year. 
And I got my start in Warhammer uh, playing 40K with, uh, I think, somewhere around 6th edition. And played Fantasy Battles for a while after that. Played uh, played Demon Hunters in 40K and played uh, Warriors of Chaos on the tabletop in uh, Fantasy Battles. When Fantasy Battles kind of died, I uh, more or less drifted away from the tabletop, but I've always been a huge Warhammer fan. So I uh, loved, you know, collectible card games, played a lot of Hearthstone. And when I saw this, uh, it just seemed like a natural fit. Warhammer plus uh, collectible card game is, is a great thing, and it turned out to be an excellent game, a lot of fun. When you're That's playing, good. yeah, when you're playing the uh, the tabletop, like, what was it that drew you initially? Was it just, like, the lore, or the the the, the uh, appearance? Because it's always interesting. Like, I mean, people play it. I, I never think about this. Like, for me, the aesthetic of the Space Marines, I think, and the bulky bolters was intriguing. Mm. Like, that was, the that was like, the thing. But, like, the, 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 the facet that kind of sold me on the game was like, you know what? I want to play this. I want to do more. Was building a Dreadnought. And the, the, the Dreadnought model Ooh. kit for 3rd edition, which was a really nice model kit. Just a clean put together and just like getting that put together, putting on the power arm and the weapon and the sarcophagus. And I was like, I had a lot of fun doing that. And that made me want to go pick up more model kits to put together. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny you mentioned Dreadnoughts. It was actually, uh, it was the intro cinematic to Dawn of War, the very first Dawn of War. Ah. That, that uh, made me think, wow, this is awesome. I love this. <laughs> and, um, you know, the Dread features pretty prominently in that. Um, my, my Demon Hunter's army has a Dread. I The only Forge World model I've ever bought, I bought the, the Demon Hunter's torso for the Dread. And uh, just, I, I love Dreadnoughts. I love the Space Marine aesthetic generally. And I kind of got into the lore from there. I've been reading the... Uh, Reading the Horus Heresy books, finally made it up to the Siege of Terra, so I'm, nice. I'm working my way through that. Nice. Right, I, I, I'm uh, I'm about a third through. I've been making some progress on the Horus Heresy series. I'm about a third through uh, Heralds of the Siege, so I've got like three books to go after it, and then I'll be into the Siege books as well. So it's not too bad. I, uh, I just finished Slaves to Darkness, and that was really good. I really enjoyed that book. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, I, I read that fairly recently. I I skipped a few here and there. I skipped a couple of the Dark Angels books. I'm not a really big Dark Angels fan. Uh, you know what? But, I won't hold it against you. Those are skippable. There are some. There are some that are skippable, and I would say the first two Dark Angels books are skippable, and that's a shame. But it is true. You know what else is skippable, Axel? What, what is also skippable? Battle for the Abyss. You know why? Yeah, <laughs> I think I know why. Yeah. I think we know why. Oh man, it is so. You know what? I'm going to just make Battle for the Abyss as a Wrath and Glory campaign and see how well that goes. I, you might have it's fun. Already, with it's it. already written for me. It's, it's already written for me. That's it, exactly. Just go point by point. You know, nominate the party members as class types and go from there. Is if there was the one with the uh, like a dozen ultramarines killing off like thousands of word bearers, it, while it's they're not even a dozen ultramarines. It's a dozen ultramarines and also a bunch of random people who shouldn't be there. They just right? all How randomly, they yeah, they, they right, randomly like met up at the tavern. And, yeah, they're like, yep. "Hey, you're a world eater. Come on, join us, berserker." Hey, body barbarian, right. space wolf. What are you up to? I, you know, if there was this, if 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 the space wolves or if the space marines, I should say, had a class type, right? Like if if there was a class type or a chapter or a legion for each D and D class, like I could I could see the rogue, I could see the wizard, I could see the sorcerer to a degree, and the paladin and the fighter, the ranger. Who do you think would be the bard? Like what legion would 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 emphasize the emperor's bard? children? Emperor's children, yeah. Oh, they have noise go. marines. That was that was not even a question. Gosh. Well, oh, yeah. I was gonna say, cleric. Cleric's easy word bearer. Yeah. I'm yeah. Because there's more to bard than just I play a loot aggressively at you. But I really think they're the closest you can get. I think that's true. We I mean they're very they're they're into the perfection of the arts, right? Like poetry yeah. and performance, and that makes sense. I didn't even think about that. So yeah. There you go. Yeah, they're, they're perfect for it. You can you can take any of the classes and put them to a, a legion. I and feel, a monk really applies to all of them. Yeah, but that's the side point. Yeah. Well, oh, there you go. Yeah. For some reason, monk says like salamanders to me. I know that you know, like minus the fire weapons part, but the like the caring for the weak and the. Yeah. You know, eh, well, that depends on the, there's, 
I say you say that there's some monk subclasses dedicated to watching people die slowly out of entertainment. Purposes. Fair enough. Fair so enough. I'd say, I mean, we could just give them the Drake Warden, the new Ranger one that has a, like a little Drake that follows them around. I mean, it's fire. Yeah, I mean, if you're getting into subclasses at that point, then it gets to be a whole yeah. different thing, and then that's really oh, getting yeah, way into the D&D, like just the basic, yeah. you know, core. Hey guys, of welcome to the D and D podcast. That's right. Listen, <laughs> you know, roll up your 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 Space Marine character using three D six and a D one hundred. Why the D100? Because yeah. that's what Fuck they you. used for uh, the Fantasy Flight games, if I recall correctly. So it's, the, yep. it's a throwback for anybody who played those. Those are good games. Anyways. Which is interesting. Ben Counter aside. No. Uh, thankfully, you know who didn't write about the Ruin Storm was Ben Counter. He did not. And, and I'm kind of glad for that. Uh, the Ruin Storm as a faction, is the faction comprised of demons of the Ruin Storm, uh, forces of chaos that are not human, not space marine, not traitor legions, uh, which it was, it's the first and actually only non-Astartes uh, traitor faction in the game so far, currently. Um, whereas yeah. the Loyalists have got several that, that kind of match up with that, with the Custodes and the Sisters of the Silence and uh, Agents of the Sigilate. But the Ruin Storm was that you know came out with the the uh, Blood Angels came out with the White Scars. It is Corn, Nurgle, and Slanesh demons and warlords, as well as as well as Chaos Undivided. I mean, there, there's some Chaos Undivided demons in there too. Uh, really focus on the mutations, and the mutations offer a bevy of enhancements at your choice for demons uh and, and and not just demons of the runestorm faction a lot of people sometimes forget that if you play a mutation on a standard neutral demon not only do they gain the benefit but it actually lowers their maintenance cost by one as well um which yeah, has led to some fun memes yeah exactly so if you put like four you know mutations on a uh, devour of the worlds it's going to be only maintenance three as well as having all of those buffs which is kind of cool yeah. Yes, that was something An I played the faction. Player for. of worlds is scary. Oh my god! Oh yeah, you can make you can make the regular demon, even a demon like Kazdrak that has you know fairly high uh, maintenance for its cost is yeah you can you can do great things. I played this faction for six months before I realized that was a thing. See, yeah, it's not really said well. It's not, and it was it was mentioned when they spoiled the mutations. And yeah, I remember Carmatos telling us. Yeah, I don't think I don't that think it's hidden in FAQ. You don't notice it until you put it on a demon where you actually can tab on it and see the buff that it says minus one maintenance because of mutation. Um, otherwise, there's no way. Like when you when you are selecting that, where it just prompts you. Whereas other mechanics have kind of established. I mean, there's still some kind of, I don't want to say confusion, but uh, some folks are unclear sometimes with how Bastion works with, with damage, how that goes. But for the most part, it's pretty consistent, whereas the mutations, that is working with, you know, cards that weren't in the Runestorm faction, which is, but there's no other card that actually says, like, hey, your, your, your maintenance is minus one. So it's kind of trial by error. Yeah. And so, once you figure it out, it's powerful. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's yeah. it's pretty cool, especially if you're putting, like, just a single mutation on, like, a Beast of Fyra. You know, if that sticks around and it's got, like, you know, the talons. Phew, that's nice. Why not? I mean, you don't have to play with demons. That's the cool thing about the demons of the Runestorm. You don't have to play with the neutral demons because you've got plenty of your own. Um, and there are... A variety. Uh, there's a there's there's the toads that spawn. There's the flags that spawn. There's the heels, the three five uh, Nurgle guys. There's the guys, the plague ridden who are creating demons. There's Slaneshi demons that are, like to hide in, in stealth and do things. There's a lot of corn heavy, beefy guys with front line. Um, they all hit hard, but the one thing also about the faction besides the the uh, the, the the mutations is this is the first and only faction currently that actually has a limitation on the neutrals that you can include in your deck which is the trade-off so they've got these strong demons they, they're playing all demons but they cannot include cards from the mechanicum card pool or the imperial army card pool uh, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of it being a, a demons thing like it's just chaos chaos and ruin storm um 
which is I thought was a really cool concept, and I'm surprised we haven't seen it done again, um, because in a way, you think about it, that's a, that's a pretty big you know handicap to paint on some of the bills. Like you're really limited. Like there are some okay chaos cards, but there's a lot. It's like eh, this just doesn't work for Runestorm support. Yeah, it's a, a uh, it's it's something I'll come back to because I have a, a mini rant canned about how. Uh, uh, Ruin Storm and, and Corbax in particular are the absolute best choice for new players in this entire game. But it it can be, I mean, a lot to collect when you are collecting tons and tons and tons of neutrals to support all of your stuff when you're just a brand new player. Like I think a lot of us who have, you know, played a long time and put a, a ton of games into this, like lose sight of what it's like in your first few months when you have just garbage to work with. Um, it can, yes, it is definitely a disadvantage overall, but, but from the brand new player perspective, you have fewer cards in your card pool to collect, to make yourself viable decks. Um, you can buy the Ruin Storm crates and you can, you know, put your, uh, what is it called? Your challenge crates on chaos and you can come up with a larger percentage of the card pool quicker. I don't mm -hmm. know, just my thing. I I yeah. love Ruin Storm because they were the guys who got me to Terra. Um Corbax in particular. I I just love that Jolly Fat Man. He's a he's a great guy. Well I think that's, that's a good fair. point too, you know, because it is a small like especially now the game has got what nine expansions. Um and we're gonna be getting another one here probably in a couple months, you know, which will be I think Adding more Ruin Storm cards, if anything, but um, yeah, that that's a big pool to dive into. And if you, as a new player, can find the easiest, quickest way to to make a full something while you're collecting other things, that, that that's a good way to go. And Corbax is very forgiving. Um, he's in a different, you know, his different state. His 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 debut state was just over the top, ridiculous. Me. You know, that was just relentless poison and enemy troop. Like, you know, the opponent, it was, it, it was basically, there was no way your opponent could get a board, uh, st established, you know, which is a cool concept, but not good in terms of, of the game, not healthy for the game. Plus I think what was his, his ability was two to heal one to the entire board, like for his, his side. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed it. <laughs> yeah. So it was, I mean, it was, it was over the top. It was a, in execution, not good. And his current state where he poisons a random troop, but he can't poison the same troop that a uh, poison troop that's already been poisoned. So if you use your energy wisely, you could still poison a full board, but you've got to, you're basically sacking your energy to do it. Um, but then he's got that, that, Passive uh, relentless heals one to a random unit, which is usually himself. Um, it's a little bit healthier in terms of a little bit easier to manage and deal with. And obviously, the Ruin Storm have had several cards that have changed as well that have impacted their performance. Um, you know, they had uh, Eternal Rivalry, which initially gave your Warlord was a plus one in Bloodthirst, and now it just gives him plus two until your next turn, which isn't quite the same and really like shuts down their ability to burst damage from the warlord they also lost uh, seekers had a conditional uh, for fast whereas now it's just a conditional for sneak attack and they have a flank they lost some things they didn't lose a whole lot but they lost some things that were really you know the key components to them like hey at, at eight energy they can put out a lot of damage and now at eight energy uh, they can put out some damage, not the same, and certainly not on levels with other factions that can put out high amounts of damage, uh, with especially with you know some of the combos that are out there with sentenced cards or uh, psh, try to think of another just like off the top like the terror stuff. I mean, right now you can get to you can be down to health pretty quick before you even get to seven energy in some games against like the Night Lords. So, but yeah, which is a shame because they're a neat faction and they're. They're really held back by that neutral. Yeah, uh, it's, it's true. They're they're in a. I, I think they're in a fairly bad place. I have about a thousand games with Corvax now, and I mean, I, I've gotten him to like twenty nine hundred or so, and he really gets thrashed when he when he gets into the the kind of middle Terra area. Yeah. Well, well, the issue is, let's think of the neutral auto includes Melgator, 
I like Jubok, even though he's not that necessarily. Uh, Malkiel? Malkiel? Malkiel, whatever. Yep. Uh, that's, that's two slash three of them right there, and none of those belong to Chaos. Right. So we're already not starting out strong. Yep. Well, yeah, the new it, girl it, uh, who increased costs, that's also, I think she's mechanical? or No, she's, she's a Navigator. Imperial Imperial Army. Army. Yep. yep. Yeah. Still not Chaos. Nope. No, as far as as far as neutrals, the only really way if you're going to get those cards is to have the new legendary Sorka, who for one energy he has he has the duplicitous, and for one energy you can choose an Imperial Army card, which might be one of those cards, but he has to survive. And another thing to consider, like while the Runestorm have got a really nice utility counterattack, it just deals one damage. You can deal to anything, which is really cool. And it's really handy for for corebacks to deal with three health troops on the initial turn one or turn two play. They don't have any flanking out the gate. They have a couple of ways to get flank late game, five, six energy, or if they've got mutations that can give flank. But there's a lot of factions now, or in general, that have got flanking at four energy. And, or even at three energy, that can deal with anything that the Runestorm drops and still have stuff to trade, and the Runestorm don't have that option. Yeah, it's uh, a slow faction that has a, kind of a weak late game, which is a deadly combination. Mm-hmm. I mean, a deadly uh, to the wrong side. <laughs> deadly to the Runestorm player. Uh, you're just like, I, I think the early game cards are largely outstanding. Uh, you get a lot of real value out of, out of a lot of cheap cards in the Runestorm pack, but, but the later game cards are kind of weak, and like you mentioned, there's very little ability to react and still maintain a board. Um, even, you know, I don't know, like even, for example, the Corbax ability. It's great, but it's also fairly slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, the, the the speed is against them. On top of that, and, and we're just talking about Corbax here, I think, for the most part, because I think, really, in terms of Warlords, um, he's the only one that can, like do somewhat decent right now. And I know Kabanda has had his run. Kabanda's done a lot of work. Kabanda was the 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 tour de force for a while there for Ruin Storm, with just having three attack, unstoppable, eternal rivalry, and the old uh you know demonettes really did a lot of work for him too, alive for some amazing burst damage. Uh, and then just using early, you know, uh Ruin Storm stuff to to do work. You can do Kazdrak with toads or rot flies possibly for for a swarm potentially with Kabanda, but the fact that he has berserk um, and he has to attack when possible that can kind of work against him. Another thing that can work against him actually right now uh, currently I don't know if too many people were because they're not playing you know uh, Kabanda, but against the Night Lord's matchup you've got a lot of those enemies that can hit you and lower your attack by two. That's great on their turn. They're hitting you for two, but on your turn, you have one attack. You don't have zero, so you have to attack with one attack as opposed to having zero attack and not having the option. You can just end your turn, so you have to take even more damage, potentially. It's it's frustrating. I mean, it's not the end all. Like he, like I said, like he's had his he's had his shine, but it doesn't leave a whole lot of room to do anything different, and... There's Samus and there's Kyrus, who you don't hardly ever see. You see people trying to make work. They don't do anything outstanding. Uh, they both really like Kyrus has just got low health. Cool concept with having the, the warp rifts. The warp rifts is that one three structure that lowers as a as a relentless lowers all the cost of demons in your hand by one. Yeah. That's a really cool ability. Samus has got a purple card that Samus can, obsessed me lately. So bad. I I, I was so like, disappointed with Samus. But, Samus in event. The purple card is at yeah. least um, yeah. fluffy, right? Like that's right. lore. A hurt unit becomes uh, like possessed by the Lord of Murder. Joint switch aside. His fucking ability is you freeze the person, which I kind of makes sense, I guess. And then they take damage. Sucks, my boy, my murder boy. Yeah, he used to even he used to just be just straight counter give can attack no damage. It was like that was which, almost better than the siege. Right? It, it was. Yeah, the abilities that switch between things, if if you don't have an extremely, I don't know, if you're not built entirely around making use of both of those things, it's 
I, I find it difficult well, to make it work. I'm not a very well. Good it's not even that. Better. What what needs to be done is it's got to be good for its value. Compare original Iota to him. Mm-hmm. They were both out at the same right. time. Iota right. was one energy, the exact same ability, but more damage. More damage, and, and it, there's and always she, the. Uh, she still costs one energy. Uh, <laughs> yep, and, and there's always the oh, don't compare between factions because it's built on the card pool. Sure, but if we pu- purely pull the card pool away, this is an example of a warlord who's a hundred percent better in every way, shape, or form. Yeah, and even then, and I yet- mean, if you're if you're looking at him compared to the other warlords, like he just, he, I don't think he's ever performed on the meta report, like at all. Like, no. and maybe maybe the I first month you. before they before they made the change to him. But I just think a lot of people in general just don't want to play him, or the ones that's like, eh, like what plays he gets. Don't even come close to putting him up there. He just isn't good. I feel like if we go far, like go back far enough, probably like not long after he come out, we can see him pop in at like a forty percent. But realistically, he doesn't exist. No, just just as people trying him out, I think more than anything. Yeah. Which is a shame because honestly, in, in, in the reading of the Horus Heresy series, aside from like Kabanda and and Samus, really. Are the only two that shine out for me. Kaban has got he's got that rivalry with Sanguinius, and that is stretches through several books. You know, it's an epic scene. Uh, Samus is book one in, in you know Horus Rises, Horus Rising. You get this notion of what Samus is, and he pops up over the course of the entire series several other times. You know, I am Samus. Samus is here. Like that. It's it's just a, such a, a haunting taunt. You know, like this cool concept. He's a, chaos undivided lord of murder demon uh that can you know possess and just like just he takes control and he is a force of chaos it's really this this cool concept this undying concept i don't think there's too many other uh demonic characters in the series in the horse heresy series that are the same level that i and i will hesitate to mention Lord of Flies, because I think Lord of Flies is on that level, although Lord of Flies is being attached to the Chaos uh, faction as opposed to the Ruinstorm faction. But I think that's really it. Like, I mean, you don't get too many others, and I don't know if there's ever going to be a story where Samus is in 40k or not. As a demon, he totally could pop up again. But to have a character, and there's there's other characters through the, throughout the Warlord pool of other factions that are just like iconic characters that get no play i mean sevatar was a prime example sevatar was one of the worst night lords warlords for the longest time he got high initiative he got a little bit better but he still was nowhere near kurz or modrum and now sevatar is looking pretty good because he got the support he needed from the card pool his ability didn't change at all but the card pool changed and it works better for him it's awesome yeah he's such a great character yeah, and he's 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 everybody's favorite Night Lord. No, I don't hear people rave about Kurz the same as they rave about Sevatar. Uh, Sigismund is another example of a warlord of a character who is like he's my favorite. Like Emperor's Children, he's wait he's the he's the Emperor's Champion uh, from the Imperial Fist. He's he's a he's the guy the the best duelist, best warrior in the entire Imperium. He gets that title as the Emperor's Champion. That's not a made up. That was made up for him. And he's almost not so cool. He got his own title. Yeah, and you've got others like you know, Aramon took a while before he became playable because he was just basically you know cheap Magnus or Magnus for for poor people. There's those no, those characters uh, like Aramon had what? his uh, specific builds. He had a build, neutral related ones. But They're well, fun, yeah, but, but it's like you could yeah you could do the same thing with Magnus though. It wasn't much different. Then he got his purple card. He had the same ability. It's only the purple card that made it worthwhile. Like he he had the ability to give precognition on demand to those high troops and to Jubak and all those other things. People just were like, eh, you know, I'll play Magnus because I have Magnus. Why would I play Araman? What particularly helped Araman in that purple card was he got that purple card during the DD meta. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's meta true. Where everyone's deck was like ten costs. Yep, and stuff, just yep. pumping them all out. And Araman goes, "That's neat." five energy yeah and then you're staring at a learning hydra and you're like all right cool we're not learning a hydra I, yeah a it's learning hydra uh, is, is it learning yep. hydra i every time i say learning i just instantly go to alpha legion so i'm like am i getting their one of their vehicles mixed up with this thing 
Uh, no. They yeah they have they have uh, they might have a Lernia troop. I don't know if it's a vehicle for the Alpha. Oh, I have to take it, a look at it. It's just Lernia is like the Hydra. Yeah. So it's like they have so many things named Lernia, and it's like their Terminators are called Lernian Terminators. They have Lernian fucking guns. Alpha Legion would be wild. That their their guns are all farious too. You know. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> Infiltrate the bullets. I'm Alpharius, and meet my little friend, Alpharius. Just tiny Alpharius. It, but yeah, instead, it, instead, it of, instead of the bullet. sound of, like, bolter pops, it's like, Alpharius, 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 Alpharius. It's, it's just Hydra Dominatus repeated every time you pull the trigger. That would almost kind of be cool. It would be. I mean, I'm just saying. I, it's, it's, I mean, Alpha Legion have talking dogs, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did this. Uh, shout out to the Dan Abnett. Yeah, Ironman got that card at the perfect moment. And then if we compare that type of purple card to Samus's, and you really want to go, Samus, why? Yeah, it's it's a shame. It's a shame. I mean, like, yeah. the the idea is fluff. That's great. But execution, I think he's the worst of the of the bunch. And, I mean, that's at this point, that's not great because it's not a great bunch. I mean, yeah. yeah. I would yeah. say he's worse than Kyrus simply because at least with her it thing... It has a use. Like, I'm going... Like, there's a specific build I can build around it. Mm -hmm. And I can try something. With Samus, it's... I'm going to completely rely on them dropping a troop that I can hurt enough to somehow it be useful with 2 HP. Or it has drop pod. Well, and even then... Like, like that's your best bet is if it has drop pod or it has survivor but a low health. Because the game state as it is now... Two health is nothing. Two health, like, you can get rid of everything with two health by playing uh, anything between a t- one tactic from hand or a board-wide tactic, defensive satellites, uh, shadow killers, uh, anything. Like, just pick it. Like, it, it means nothing. All you're doing is taking a body and giving your opponent a turn to kill it in. Yeah. Now, I know you specifically stated right now, but I'm going to say something, and I know you're not going uh, to disagree even when he dropped, removing something with 2 HP was very easy. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what they were thinking. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. It, it actually, like, I'm it, yeah, I'm baffled yeah. that that's a special card. Yeah, it's just Samus and, Samus and Kyrus are, are not competitive in a faction that's already not hurting, hurting hard Kabunda, or competitive. Yeah. Kabunda had potential when he had, um, what was it, uh, Korin's favor. Uh, Korin's, yeah. Corn's well, chosen, Corn's favored, yeah, mm-hmm. whatever it's called. Oh yes, and, yeah, as a, but as a neutral, yeah, eternal yeah. rivalry, yeah. It, well, he had eternal rivalry, which mm-hmm. was nice before they killed it. Kabanda starts with General of Corn nowadays, and which I you I never trigger it. Assume you did before. Well, yeah, you. It's it's almost impossible to trigger, and Ruin Storm of all of their weaknesses. One of their biggest weaknesses is draw. Mm-hmm. Like you, do, you don't have draw. You have unspoiled land. Maybe you have two copies of it. Again, I, I approach this from the new player perspective. It's an epic card, you know. You, Unspoiled Land is your draw. Uh, you you don't have access, like we've talked about, to Imperial Army or to Mechanicum. Like you're not going to be able to play Lacticio Divinatus, which makes sense for Ruin Storm. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not going to be able to play any other tag. Like you you rely on card creation, and if Kabanda is starting off with a you know, if he's what? Uh, he's a high initiative, medium initiative. Mm-hmm. So half the time, at least, you're starting off with three cards, and one of them is a card that is very, very, very close to an ex- completely dead card. I mean, you just it it really sets you back hard. Really well, that was, that was intentional. Hard. That was supposed to be a nerf for Kabunda. They gave him the card. That was yeah. back when he still had Eternal Rivalry, right? It so worked. You, so you can kind of be like, all right, I see what you guys are doing here. But then they went, also, he lost this card. Which, may I add, just because he had to lose it means specific Kairos builds that were very fun, where you could drop two warp portals in one turn, got killed as well. Yeah, it was... Like, they were put on a pedestal for no reason. The patch that that destroyed the Eternal Rivalry and the uh, Demonettes yeah. was, one of the, was one of those patches, and this this was a patch over a year ago. I mean, this is a, it was one of those patches that went too far. Where it was like, okay, yeah. we went from you know fixing some things to just making this not 
not winnable. I mean, like, it, yeah, you can still play Ruin Storm. You can, you still are probably going to have Eternal Rivalry in your deck because, in in a pinch, it's you know some four damage, five damage. If you're Kalanda, you know that's it. But it's not like you have too many other choices either. Like, and that's the thing. Like, it always circles back to, to that. Like for me, when I was playing Ruin Storm, the Samus deck was the only deck that I tried to actively make different than the other Runestorm decks. Because the other Runestorm decks is like, okay, well, got to have these in here. Got to have the Toads. Got to have the 4-2s. Got to have the 3-5s. And some front line. Give me the Channel Rivalry. Let's go ahead and put Path of Blood in here. Like, next thing you know, there's like, you know, two card spots. You're like, well, uh, it's Chaos. So I guess I'll take an Informant Network for Stealth and maybe an Artillery Strike or Defense. I mean, like, there wasn't too many options. Samus was the only one I tried to actively like, okay, let's try not to do the go-tos. I'll do something with cultists. Just no support for it. No no way to really make it work. No way to make it awesome. And it doesn't, it just does worse. So it's not even like, hey, you could do this better. Like, I think there's, you could probably do a cultist deck with Runestorm somehow. But the, the problem is that none of the warlords support the play style. No. No. And you you think they would because they drop with the Cygnus cultist? Yeah, something or even just but, like when a cultist dies, or you know you like you know, put in play one like, one uh, demon, like put in play a rot flies or something. Like if Kyrus's ability put in play things, but only if she killed her troops, then you could have some cultist fun where you can shoot your cultist to get a portal. Yeah, but shoot, even then that would be that would be neat. Yeah, get a portal and maybe if you're it's a chaos sorcerer, get a uh, another demon to go with it. Yeah, that could that could be fun, but you know, didn't happen. No, nope. such a shame. They have so much wasted potential in the faction. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I, they have a corpse spawn uh, tier legendary. The nine seven. Yeah, yeah. It, that it, is a win more card. It, absolutely, absolutely. It, it's it's it, in theory like oh wow, it's nine seven sneak attack with two four two sneak attacks. It's crazy. How will I ever deal with it? And you're like, well, I was already losing. So, you know, that's it. Or you're like, well, I already won, so that's not going to do anything because it doesn't have any other impact on the game. Unless, like, you've got a mutation in hand and you give it frontline or something. I don't really see it might, yeah, it working. I, I was going to say, in my opinion, if the card's cost goes above, like, 8 and above and it doesn't have frontline or, like, fast or flank or a rally, mm -hmm. it won't do anything. And if that rally has to somehow put pressure on their board, a bunch of bodies that they were just going to ignore is not enough pressure uh, at nine energy. Mm -hmm. He's nine, no. right? I, I keep yeah, forgetting he's, if it's eight he's, or nine. Yeah, Manisha yeah. Rock Chassis. Yeah, yeah. It's not. yeah that, that, that's fucked. You're not, you're not playing that card. And if you are, hats off to you because somehow you're discounting it. Yeah, that was the first legendary that I that I got for the faction. And I included it because it was it was maybe the first legendary I ever got in the game. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. Look at this. And then I like tried running it in some games. And I was like, wait a minute, this is getting tooled on. And that was in like Prospero. <laughs> it was just not, it, it is, I mean, it's, it's hard removal bait. Like you said, it puts up four twos that either get AOE'd off or just totally ignored. Mm -hmm. um, the, the great thing about Demonettes, I, I still like Demonettes. I know you guys have referenced that they used to be much better. Um, I, I use Demonettes fairly effectively. I feel like they synergize pretty well with some of the factions, other troops, like Plague Bearer, especially if you get a Demonettes on the board and then you can drop down a Plague Bearer, kill something with the Demonettes, or drop down a Fallen, kill something with the Demonettes and protect it with the Fallen. Um, but but just having two pop up without stealth, what does that do for you? Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, they're still good. It's just they're shells of them for, their former selves. Yeah. The... The thing I like about Ruinstorm, the thing I really enjoy is you do get a pretty versatile early game out of them, um, especially for a faction that, again, has next to no draw. You know, I run in my Corvax deck, I run the Unspoiled Lands, of course, uh, Rot Swarms, Warp Rifts, Furies, Demonettes, and a Plague Toad, and doing so, well, one Warp Rift, but doing so, I mean, you, you get options early game, like you throw down a Warp Rift on turn one, or, you know, a Fury on turn two, and it mutates and becomes a, a friggin', like, what, a 5-3, uh, that a 5-3 Stealth Unstoppable 
is a pretty good card for turn two. Mm -hmm. And then that goes into the cards that you're going to be able to play on turn two or turn three, rather uh, your, your plague bearers, your fallen to protect what you've got um, path of blood or mutations or whatever. And you can get off to a pretty good start, especially combined with the fact that as, as a quarterbacks player, you know, if they have something where they're setting up like the, the card that sticks out to me, I love facing the Night Lords with Corbax because he is going to throw down yes. a recon claw and I'm just going to poison it and I don't care. <laughs> you put out your Shrek, I don't care. Yeah. Poison, 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 poison. Uh, same with Space Wolves. Put out all the ward you want. I'm going to poison all of it. Uh, that that lets you get that early kind of momentum building. But if you don't get that, you're boned. Mm. Like you have no recourse for the mid game and the late game. As much as we are talking about how bad Rune Storm is and how they're not great, it still upsets me that Corbacks is fake RNG. Uh, there are a lot of cards in this game that say it does blank to a random unit, and it does it multiple times, and they don't stack. But for some reason, when they got the Corbacks, they just ignored that and let his poison not stack. Oh, it's the RNG only would thing be that makes it It is. But it's very upsetting when certain cards get like a special treatment for no reason. Yeah, that's fair. It's a shame. But at the same time, Corbax needs it. Well, the, yeah, he's, he's yeah. yeah. And the thing is, if it was just a simple clarification to his wording, like we know what it does. If they were just like yeah, poison, yeah, all they poison a, a random stuff. troop that isn't already poisoned. Yeah, that's all you got to do is add some words to it. Because right now the the current wording is like, oh, so I can poison? No, 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 it's not going to stack. Poison, mm -hmm. not only because it can't stack, but and I wonder why they did that. To. Like it would be one thing, like I mean, if you're Mortarian, if you're playing Death Guard, it, I believe his reckoning ticks down every time you poison troops that have already been. So like, if you play Death Cloud twice on a full board, I think it triggers twice for that full board. I think it does. I've never tried to be honest. Then again, I don't think most players try because I know the animation play plays Mortarian. over again. Like the animation will play a second time. Yeah. Normally, when something like that happens, it just kind of gives up if it were to play the animation again. Mm -hmm. I think it might actually d stack. We'll have to, but there's nothing we'll to figure that yeah, out. There's nothing with the Rune Storm that that really takes that into account. Where like every time you poison a troop, you know, gain something. There's there's a couple poison cards. You know, there, there's there's mm -hmm. there's the rot flies, and obviously there's a mutation that gives the troop poison as well as some additional health, but. There's nothing that's like, you know, every time a troop dies by poison or you poison a troop, do X. So, yeah. I don't know. You know, it's interesting. Um, actually, you mentioned the the fake RNG. It, it's not the only example in Ruin Storm. The other no. one is when you use Mutate, the ward will not come up if you uh, that's are true. playing it on a warded troop. And neither neither will um, Rage. It, rage used to, though, which was very fun to have, like, a Rage deal five damage to the entire enemy board. Glorious. But for some reason, we can't do that. I, I remember I when why. they took when they took the ward off. The ward would not be an option for other ward troops. Maybe they did that at the same time. Because that is kind of frustrating. Like, I already have ward. Thank you. You can get frontline choice a couple times. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know why they're selective about it. And like, I already have frontline. Don't give this to me. Stop it. Stop it. I don't want frontline. I, and then you, when you do want frontline, you don't get it. You're like, oh, Never flank. Done. Thanks. Great flames. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, as far as mutations go, that's got to be the the most frustrating one because typically the play style in general, and not just for, for Runestorm, but most things, you don't play buffs unless it's on a card that you are going to use that turn. Unless you're desperate. Yeah. Unless you're like, or, or it's a perfection buff, you know, or something like that where you have to play at that turn for the setup. Like, typically you don't because you want to make sure it's going to stick around so your opponent can't answer with a flank or a hard removal or something's done and kind of like waste your efforts. Typically, mm -hmm. there's often a lot of play mistakes. Sometimes when people sink two or three buffs into a car that gets bounced by Melgator, you have to learn. That's just something that you've got to learn as far as how to properly use those cards to, to, the, to the best of your ability. But when you're playing a mutation, you're typically playing it on a troop that is you're going to be attacking with. So flank... Is completely redundant. You're like, yeah, I can. I, I, flank would have been useful last turn. Like maybe if that, like it, like the 
there are like maybe two troops that flank would actually be useful on, and you have to play it when they come in to use it to like give them a mutation, like the uh, the four five one that like it's kind of like the the lesser chosen. Um, I forget what that one's called, but it's like a four or five for two energy. Yeah, it's like demon brute. I demon think brutes, so. Yep. Yeah, like yeah. The, that one or the maybe the five four uh, demons that are stealth that can give a mutation to a another unit. Herald, yeah, herald of yeah. Slanesh. Yeah, yeah. Outside of that, like yeah, you know, it's 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 like a desperate gamble where you're like, well, it, maybe I'll get flank and I can just kill that thing with this unit. Like that's about it. Flank. Flank and front line. Those are the two that are that are the like. Okay, I have you know a mutation to use here. I have you know a, what thirty seven percent chance that I'm going to draw my my mutation that I need. Like I'm I'm desperate to stay alive for another turn. I've got to throw a front line on this unit. Mm-hmm. Like I've got a giddle jaw on the board. It's a six nine body, and I just have to have a big front line and and pray. Um, yeah, then, then I mean the the front line and flank are are the two that are I think the probably the overall least useful. Yeah. No, I mean you compare that with the fact that you can give ward to a very scary troop. Ward or survivor uh, two, you know, not just survivor, survivor one. Two, survivor two, survivor two. Uh, health plus was it plus three health or plus two health and poison? I think I think, it, I think it's. Is it's it two, two health, health and poison? Yeah, it is, it two is two health, health and poison. Two health, three attack. And then, and then they're Yeah, the three attack and then the rage one, one. and then and one one. One one wings. unstoppable. Yeah. And terror. I like how I like how these are just marks. Yeah. Like a good chunk of Better these are marks. just marks. You know, marks for that. Well, that no, I choice. mean like no, when I say marks, oh, marks I mean chaos. some of them are identical to marks. Yeah. yeah, they're like plus three attack, that's identical to Mark of Corn. Plus one one and unstoppable, identical to Zinch. Mm-hmm. Do, I actually think they might have a plus one, like their terror one. Is it just terror? Does it increase your it's attack? Just by one? It's just yeah, terror. It's just terror. Yeah. If it if it also increased your attack by one, that was just Slanesh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the terror one is is somewhere in the middle. The uh, it, it can be useful. The, it, yeah, and there's also cleave. They also have cleave too. Yeah, cleave. Yep, cleave too. Yeah, cleave. Yeah. Cleave, can, cleave can be arguably better. Yeah. Primarily yeah, because I, right can hit their, yep. I can hit their warlord in the face and cleave something as well. And cleave the stealthy yeah, defenders things. of Caliban mm-hmm. die to cleave into the rage one. Yes. Um, defenders of Caliban are, like, I had much harder times playing against uh, DOC when I was doing Blood Angel stuff than with, like, with Corbax. I mean, just getting a, I mean, you can have a nothing, you can have a rot fly. And you can throw a mutation on it, and you get the rage, and then suddenly it kills two Jaegers and yeah. poisons something else. I it's, I found Blood Angels had a pretty good time against them because Blood Angels have a lot of ways to just like they're flankers. They have, they have several flankers with cleave. They have um, uh, their better informant network. I mean, they can play Caliban's heart at, at eight energy because then I will just play my uh, ship at eight energy and heal all it back and more. Yes. I think that's a yeah, I, matchup. I, I struggle hard against Luther. Luther uh Luther oh, gives me you, you constant got, hard. You gotta get on the Amit train. I'm telling you, dude, Amit's so fun. He works really well Amit. against Luther because he's like if Pig uh, Master. Yeah, yeah, he's Pig Master, but also like that just my that's how my take is I don't put out like there might be two turns in the game that I have more than one troop on the board. And the the troops that I have are going to die, so it's like, all right, you can kill it. I'm pinging something. I'm usually your face, you know. So by the time he hits mm-hmm. reckoning, he's already dead, anyways. That's the idea, yeah. anyways. I mean, it's, it's a it's a it's a sink or swim. That's a plan. Whether or not it happens, I've won that's more di- de- uh, defenders of Caliban games with Amit than I've lost so far. So that's, that's I, b- I believe you. That's the way to go. But Ruin Storm. Yeah. Makes even worse of that because, like, then you could have you throw down the little not the plague ridden, the uh, the 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 little two four guy, and you got yourself like so many mutations from killing all the Jaegers, you know? Yes, and yes, that's this is true. yeah, like the the two four dude that makes a, a a mutation every time you kill an enemy troop, throw him down, you, you kill out with like a toad, that's a mutation. Maybe you use your counterattack, that's a second mutation. Uh, then you put that on somebody, then they've got like, you know, rage, deal one damage, they kill everything else, and there's more mutations. Like, it is, uh, it, that that's a hard game for the defenders of Caliban in general to win, or at least the defenders' builds that rely on 
the two health, one health troops. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I've, I definitely do better against defenders with uh, with corebacks, especially than mm-hmm. uh, with a lot of other factions. I mean, and and uh, just getting getting back on the corebacks is great for new players. Train the warlord power. I mean, yes, poison is slow. Poison especially got a big nerf when they buffed survivor or not survivor sacrifice. Right? sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that crushed poison, but but the the great thing about it, you don't need to build for anti stealth. You don't need to worry about ward or precog or shield or duplicitous or something behind a front line or something with a high health pool. I mean, for two energy, it's it's gone in a turn. It gets to act once. You know, you you the guy throws out a kaizu lane. Okay, I poison it. Right, and he gets to use then, it once. You know, oh, he, he gets gave you something. once. Right. Yeah, like it it takes so much of the like I, I think the hardest part of this game is deck building, at least it is for me. Um the the play definitely at the higher levels, you know, optimizing your play is really gonna make the biggest difference. But when you're looking at people who are three months in, like they're still struggling like they understand the mechanics, they understand how the game works, but they don't have that many options mm-hmm. to deal with. Like I had a guy in my lodge, like I did, I play in a very casual lodge, uh, Gaskell's gets represent. Uh, we're, you know, we got a lot of players who were in the thousand ish range for rank and, you know, they were trying to optimize decks, but a lot of them don't have two informant networks. A lot of them don't have the options for playing, you know, in a, in a meta that's heavily Raven guard, like how how do you run a deck with no anti stealth? Well, the the option is Corvax because he doesn't care about any of those things that protect your troops. He just poisons away and then he uses his burp emote, <laughs> which is also my favorite part of the character. Corvax is the anti stealth. He really is, yeah. Players, yeah, yeah. He's the anti precog. He's the you know you can precog everything you want. It's getting poisoned. Like if mm-hmm. you're. Re- Lying on having a card on the board that's going to generate ten psychic energy for you over the course of five turns. Well, it's not because it's precogged and then it gets poisoned and then that's it and it gets to attack once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that will deplete resources for those decks that rely on those troops to kind of stick around and make resources. Um, it, you know, by by turn six seven, they're normally seeing more return and they've lost it. So it really puts them more of in a pitch, which then leads into Korbax's strong suit, which is nice. I mean, that that's the playstyle that he's got. Maybe throw down a Guija, or you run in, into, was it the, the uh, you don't see it too much was... anymore, but the one that, like, brings back, like, three or four demons that have died that game. Uh, oh, ter- uh, no, no, not Plague. It's, Plague Ridden will just bring them back if they die. It's not oh. Terror. I'm, I almost want to say it's Terror in Reality, but it's not one. No. Sealed, sealed Pact. Sealed Pact. Sealed, sealed Pact, sealed pact. Sealed pact. Sealed pact. yes. Like, yeah, that's what it is. What am I thinking of when I say Fracture in Time? What card is that? Fracture in Time. It's the uh, put everything back in your hand. Yeah. That's, put everything okay. back yeah. in yeah. everything. Yeah, that, that's totally different than what we were talking about, but that's that name popped in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A Sealed Pact is, you know, it exists. It's it, it, You don't see it too often anymore because the game yeah. has gone beyond that, but it is an option. Yeah, yeah. I had to I stop mean, running it because it was just—it's it, very inconsistent. You're going to run a bunch of low-cost demons, uh, and you're going to get like yeah. Uh, you're like, all right, I paid out. ten to get four energy of troops. Yay! Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a rock. Like it's the worst, kind of fury. but it it really only works if you're not running early game. But you can't afford to not have an early game. No. As, um The uh, rune storm. Well, so shoot yourself in the foot. Some of that early game, at least with certain matchups like the the Raven card, that can be a detriment. You know, you you're not going to be able to play play totes. You probably yeah. don't want to play the rot flies either. Like you don't want to give tokens for them to to either uh, you know um, sentence and trigger a mission or just to sneak attack and hide from you the entire game. So that so you lose out on that. And then you hope, like, well, then I'll get to the big stuff. And there's only a couple big stuff that are really decent for the Rune Storm currently. Um, you and you have to kind of hope too, right? Like, if you got cho- the chosen, right? Where you're like, all right, get Ward, please, get Ward yeah, or survive from absolutely. the drop. Like, that's absolutely. it. Absolutely, it's 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 basically Ward too. I mean, yeah. there's so much hard removal. Yeah. Like Survivor is 
good, but I mean, you you get bored or the chosen goes away. Yep. And if the chosen stays on the board, it demon chosen is the card that took me from like I don't know mid Mars to mid Terra because it is the ultimate finisher for the faction. It's just such an absolutely brutal card. You know, if, you, it, if it survives sticks on curve, you win. Yeah, if it sticks on curve, it's it's yeah. very much a a Argus Brond or a Halden Bailey. It is that card where man that it hits, it sticks. You got this. Like you have to mess up pretty bad to not. Like I mean, like you yeah. could technically use its ability and just get like all right front line flank rage one really thanks wow fantastic for these mutations but you i mean that would be really bad that would you just throw the towel at that point like, typically you're not yeah you're gonna get a, plus three that's survivor that's war, that's let's go. on you yeah yeah you like can, if you, you, if you, can, you get him oh, free if he drops and the next your turn rolls around and he's still alive i mean Anything that happens, I'm blaming you. Yeah, like bad RNG <laughs> will screw you over, but you'll still get some good things. Yeah, you should. Yeah, at that point, you should put a big enough dent where then you can do something from. And I think you know that kind of leads us to to the card pool. But before we get to talking about, I guess our our favorite cards or the the best the best cards of the bunch, kind of circling back to the to the warlords. I think we're all in agreement. Corbax is 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 currently the top dog. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I I really like our boy uh, Kabunda, but you know, yeah, uh, just because I like him doesn't mean he's good. No, I want to. I mean, lore wise, like I said, lore wise, Samus is my like favorite. Him. Samus is my favorite warlord of Samus the bunch. Samus is a good demon, but he I has he shows up in forty. Yeah, he has not ever been good to play outside of the event. Before he was a available collectible warlord, his ability was different, and he was interesting. Um, I would love to see him in a different position, and I would like to see some more synergy with other cards in the faction, or even other you know him synergizing with neutrals a little bit better. But we don't have that, so I think Corbax is definitely the way to go. No, Got a real quick. Oh, sorry. You, oh no, you're fine. Um, uh, the uh, Silent uh, Death, Silent Death is the best neutral for Corbax. Oh, absolutely, it is. Yeah. It, it is just yeah. absolutely crushing. Well, it's one of the few they can use because it's in the chaos pool. So you may as well. Yeah, as far as as far as cards, top chaos cards, and maybe that's something we should really really stress here because I mean, normally we're talking about the faction cards themselves, the warlords and the faction cards. But with this faction being tied to chaos and really limited to just the chaos, I mean, I think it's worth mentioning a couple of the very uh, I want to say necessary but extremely useful and or helpful chaos cards for the ruin storm now that i'm thinking about it it really sucks because most of the healing comes from mechanicum that's well or like, yeah mechanicum there's a couple like you've got you've got the wonders of tiska but you don't have too much more you don't have manifest destiny you don't have you don't the have pie elves. yeah you don't have asteroid belts you don't have drilling sites really all chaos like out of the neutrals when you think of tech chaos gives an anti-stealth that everyone loves and form a network is mm -hmm. essentially a feature in a deck not really a card but something that's just there and they got like death sats they have board damage that's really seek all they're bringing to the table seek and destroy to a limited extent. i would say seek and destroy up until like callus will be in your deck because after that, a lot of factions have a version of that, or it's a flanker. Sure, that's fair. I, I, I actually can't remember the last time I used Seek and Destroy. Then again, I play Word Bears, so I have Seek and Destroy as a troop. So I would, I would probably yeah. mention. I mean, you mentioned uh, Silent Death, but I would probably say, as far as the Chaos cards that go in there, besides Silent Death and Form of Network, Trez to a degree on Corbax is nice if he sticks around. You can kind of like feed him. Fuel him, repair him, and then he prepares you. That's just kind of a nice little thing. But he's a legendary. He, he's good with quarterback. Yeah. Otherwise, really, it's like you got Kazdrak, which is a good demon for for your swarms, for your toads, and for your rot flies. Uh, make them make them something tasty. And then you're really kind of relying on yeah the damage tactics. You know, maybe a planetary purge. Um, or a rain of fire, perhaps, if you really want to go that route. You don't want to go with the defensive satellites because you don't want to low roll 
you're at least going to get two with the planetary purge. That's an option. Um, but like even then, and, and it's weird saying it because we're talking about how mutations benefit demons, but really, like I very rarely put aside from Kazdrak, and maybe I wouldn't even put I wouldn't even put the uh, I don't know how to pronounce it the the six the six cost six six dude Drac Dracian. Oh, I just call him Drac. Yeah, I I like he just like. It's got his backlash only works if you don't have if if you've got non demon troops. So there's, right, right, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, he's he's terrible for ruins. You're stuff. having Beast so of many Fyra is kind of okay. Yeah, Beast of Fire can do some work if you can get if you have mutations queued up. Like if you had a good plague bearer start, um, Beast can you know if you got two mutations in hand and it's you know turn five or six or something and you slap down a Beast and mutate mm-hmm. it twice, it can be. I mean, potentially with flank, it can do a lot of work, and and if it survives somehow, it's only maintenance one, but with with two mutations on it, right, basically. right. But yeah, they they don't synergize well with cultist troops. I feel like they don't synergize at all with Drac Nine. Mm-hmm. Completely, completely out of it. Which I think is and, interesting because you know the Ruin Storm was kind of, I, I guess maybe. Maybe it wasn't. I mean, maybe in terms of how the approach to this faction was, the Prune Storm was supposed to be specifically the demons and the forces that mostly, like, uh, the Blood Angels encountered Cygnus Prime, but also they encountered on the way trying to pierce the Rune Storm itself to reach Terra in the book Rune Storm, surprise, uh, written by the author Rune Storm, uh, Who's following in Ferris Manus' footsteps? Um, but like maybe that's the point because there were a lot of demons of the same uh, ilk, Nurgle, Slanesh, Corn in the battle in the Webway that uh, that the Custodians and the Sisters were holding off, uh, you know, at, at the gates of Terra. But those aren't mentioned. And that's where Drachnian makes his appearance. That's where Drachnian really just kind of like you know becomes a powerhouse. Um, yeah, but none of, shows up. Kind of. Yeah, none of those. Uh, maybe that was not the intention was to incorporate them into that. Like there, there are demons. They're demons of chaos. But eh, that's not the ruin storm part we want to talk about. Maybe that's the point. I don't know. What blows my mind is yeah, they drop with the Cygnus fanatics, Cygnus or just Cygnus cultists in general. Yeah. We're mentioning their you know synergy, but then they had no synergy. Like not even a couple like sacrifice your troops type saying sacrifice your infantry relentless kill an infantry yeah. do blank right because chaos is all about sacrifices yeah, the, only, the only cultist that synergizes even vaguely with rune storm is the what is it one? the two four something priests of thoros maybe that creates demons. oh yes well no those are is that a cultist it's 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 not a cultist though i don't think they're just oh yeah you're right, you're right. there yeah, are several things cultists that synergize with demons but not directly in the way we want. There's no. the one one that will give uh, your a demons one one or a demon one a demon. Yeah, and then and then I think the two two's uh, ability to kill himself works on demons as well on the buff or is it just infantry that get buffed when he does? Um, you, know, the, you know what I'm talking about? The two two with a, I think it's a zero cost ability to just die and buff his board. I think so. Yeah, I, I feel like that's just your. Cultist. I don't know if that's the whole board. I think. It. Yeah, Cygnus Cult Disciple. Or Cygnus yeah, I Disciple. think it's just, it's either just infantry or it's infantry and demons. Infantry and demon. Oh, okay. Okay, so it is kind of cheating. useful. <laughs> I mean, well, you got, I, I, you got to Chelcha Engine, you've got Command Bridge. Like, there yeah, there are well, other cast com- cards, but for troops, they're, you're, you're. Well, that's the thing, like, right? Yeah. You're, you're not really going to use the engine because you have better uh, options in your faction. And Command Bridge isn't that great. Primarily because you're not drawing much tactics of that faction, so you're not really oh, teching yeah, towards an, tactics. It's an extremely troop-heavy faction. Yeah. You, you have to rely on troops. It, it, I mean, you have... Like, Deceit is... Uh, you know, Deceit can solve problems for you, but, like, your chances I, of drawing I do, Deceit are... Well, that's the thing. I really like their hard removal. That's a good hard removal. If it was yeah. in any other faction, I'd be very happy. But yes, but alas. Now I'm thinking about it. They lack a lot. I don't think they have any good heal. Co- like, in faction, what are their heal cards? They've got Poxbringer? The, yeah, they've got Poxbringer. They've got Corbax. 
Corbax is a warlord. I'm not really counting him. But that's it. Have a good point. That's it. Like yeah, within the faction that's, that's itself, like the mutations add health to troops, but there's no way to add health to your warlord. Let they, me put mutations on my warlords. Yeah, there's there's Jesus there's no Christ. like there's no like backlash heal or rage heal. It's just mutations, and you got that one Poxbringer making making some money working. Poxbringer at one time was pretty powerful. He's no apothecary Theon now. I mean, the the, the game has has progressed. I know we're we're not really trying to compare faction to faction, but I mean, it's a, it's a shining example of how this was a card. It didn't change at all compared to some of the other cards that did change in the faction. This card didn't change at all. But the pace of the game is like, all right, you got Poxbring, you can play him. He's not as effective as he used to be because everything else elsewhere is more effective. He's kind of a win more for me. I mean, he's one of those things where when you've built a board and you're ahead and you get a Poxbringer down, it's going to keep the board alive. But by that point, you've already would- got a board. Mm hmm. I wouldn't call Poxbringer a win more, though, because you can just drop him as, on curve as a passive heal and something they must deal with. That's true. That's, that's true. I, I'm, He's not a... I yeah, would you're right. Yeah, I'd, I'd say more win more where it's a card that's just going to flex. I think that 7-7 seven, seven stealth is one of those ones. That, he is really oh, a win luck. more, but also if you're forced into a stale, stalemate by him, it's kind of miserable. Yes. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, you're just like, oh, like, yeah, it, it, kill it, another one of my team. Yeah, you're like, I'm trying not to give you fuel, and somehow you're managing to do it. You're taking all my stuff and making it yours. And he fits in with the kind of the what I see as one of the themes of Ruinstorm, which is card creation as opposed to card draw. Yeah. Um, where they're not ever going to draw. Unspoiled Land is hot garbage if you don't have a giant troop deck. Of all demons, by the way, which which is one more strike against the idea of playing cultists with with uh, Ruinstorm Warlords is that it screws Unspoiled Land. Right. I mean, also, I was going to say Unspoiled Land has the opposite problem that Custodes face. The Custodes will have an entire deck of just um, Custodes cards and, and never draw it games. with their blood games and blood game. We'll draw the other blood games. Yeah, and that blood games will draw lightning spirits. Land or loves to draw unspoiled land and deceit. Yes, I, w- yeah, I would say every videos, but... every time I played it so far, it's drawn a demon. That's only been a couple dozen times, but that is a very high. That is a significantly higher chance of my Valdor deck. Yeah, so. it, it's glorious when it draws an Elital or a Demon Chosen or something like that. But I mean, Elital is the other legendary we haven't really talked about. The, the he... super strong legendary. Yeah, yeah. But you, you, he just, <laughs> you're just gonna draw a war. Well, you know, there's, 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 <laughs> have much there. going on. there's one more legendary. There's actually two that we haven't talked about, but we don't need to talk about them too much. Bioblade. Yep. And you haven't mentioned uh, Bioblade. Cathedral of the Mark. We're talking about card creation. There's another. That's a perfect example. Uh, it's Cathedral of the Mark. You know that res- resolution, re- relentless. Create a demon in your hand. Just a demon. Like that's actually a really that's, you know, like, that's better than Forge Complex to a degree for the Demon Faction. But it comes on too late for them. Like, that, at 5 Energy, they want to put down those bigger bodies. Those bodies There's that are so much something. leeway in both directions. There's yeah. so much leeway. You're you're going to get a friggin' Rot Swarm, or you're going to get Plague Toads, right. or you're going to get some, like, the, the ten, ten whatever it's called, Bloodthirster or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, it's just, you're just going to get some extreme in the middle of the game and be like, oh, that's great. Like, that's that's outstanding. Yeah. A card that's obsolete or a card that I won't be able to ever play. You get, that's, that's one of my worst parts about the faction. I'm oh, sorry, Scuff. Oh, I was just going to say, like, you get a bunch of, uh, you know, Devour of the Worlds. You're like, wow. That's great. I can't even play them to get their cost reduced. Thanks. Yeah. 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 What I was going to say is what I just like about the faction a lot is all the card generation where my hand's full of things I'm not going to play or can't. It's the same reason why I don't like Port Ma. On yeah. Merit alone. It's just like, yes, here's cards I'm not going to play. Mm, fill my hand. Yeah. You got to, you got to set it up really hard from the beginning. I mean, that's, that's where. Like the a lot of my Corvax games were decided, I feel like by turn five, mm-hmm. because either I got you know I get a warp rift out turn one, and they're not able to deal with it, and then I've got a bunch of cheap demons. I get them out. They start doing things when enemy troops die, and then everything just snowballs from there. Or I put stuff out, 
and it gets dealt with immediately and I have no way to get back on curve in a reasonable manner at all because, I mean, you have no AoE other than DSATs maybe. Um, you have no, like, turn the tables kind of cards. You You really rely on being able to set up some kind of combo fairly early on and if you're not able to do that you're stuck yeah. and generating isn't going to help you at that point because it relies on having troops out there to generate i mean they have they have utility troops like we talked about demon brutes earlier i think demon brutes is the like one of the archetypical ruin storm cards because it can do so much it's a swiss army knife i mean a, a four five for five is not great but coming out with a mutation and potentially making it a seven five for five or a four five ward mm -hmm. or whatever else. And then if you can't do anything with it, you can always use the power and just give it more stuff. But if you are in a position where you're dropping it into an enemy board and it's just going to get smoked, nah, what do you do? And my, yeah. while, while I'm complaining, but the fact that all of their front lines have Berserk yes. is a major <laughs> disadvantage. Like, that is a real serious disadvantage. The last troop that you want to have Berserk is your front line. Right. And they Do all they have, have it. The neutral, the neutral ones have the same scenario, where it's the uh, neutral the corn deer uh, yeah. front line. Yeah, they yeah. also got Berserk, because their front line isn't because they're on the defensive. Their front line is because they're on the offensive. Right. You're stuck shooting at them. Right. The thematically, it's there. I, I, one thing that's also interesting about their front line compared to you know, your, your typical good front line troops. Good front line troops can sit there and maybe give you an ability or a passive. Active, yeah. Right? Like, boom, pay one energy and it does something and then I can do other things. They don't have that. Like the best thing they've got, you've got one that has got a, rel uh, a relentless. You know, your demons get plus one, and then you've got the other one that's got rage, deal one damage. You know, to to the board. That's those are your best things. Like the, there's not a whole lot there where it's like, oh, cool, he's a front line, and if I at least if I am attacking with him, I'll you know get something like he gives like heal my warlord for two or survivor. You know, like a rage heal my warlord for two or rage get my survivor or my warlord survivor one. That could be handy. That would be a really interesting change to uh, to the to the the five drop. You know, instead of them dealing one damage that they heal or they give survivor, eh, or even the four threes. You know, those little four three guys because those guys are fairly disposable as a speed. Yeah, bomb, they're, you're going to put them in there. They're a solid troop. Yeah, I mean, they the it can do a lot of work for you, but. It like you said, it, it is not contributing anything to the strategic state of the game, just mm -hmm. the the tactical state. Yeah, yeah, just just to protect a body for a turn, you know. If that, I think Chaos Furies are are definitely you know good. The stealth stuff I like more than I like the frontline stuff. I think that, and I think that's a big thing with the way the faction is. There's only so many choices. Um, the stealth stuff you can rely on doing for the most part a little bit more with. Uh, requires a little bit more setup, or maybe maybe a mutation or two to really make it shine. But then you also have Poxbringer who can get those back in your hands, so you can play them again. Whereas you know you have to make a choice: do I play Frontline or do I play Poxbringer? Do I do, do I put the Frontline and then maybe it's not even alive by the by the time I play the Poxbringer? Like it's a different it's a different approach. Yeah. Also, missed opportunity for the faction to have any demon engines at all. It blows. To my mind that they have exactly none. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Demon engines are a constant thing. They're not man-made. Well, some are, but still, they they exist. So I don't know why they lack them. We might, yeah, we'll maybe we'll nice see them see. when we get the uh, whatever the expansion is that like feeds them new cards. Maybe we'll get a couple of those. Maybe we won't. Like, nice. Active abilities. I mean, you you don't see active abilities. They don't have them. Mm -hmm. Like the only they... active ability I know of. I you can I think you can mutate Kerbasi, the the crappy two energy one four spawn. And I mean they got a bunch of they, they got a lot of active abilities. The issue is that they're well the I guess they, they do yeah. is the mutation. You know, every time I, think, I see fair, the giving giving mutations to themselves or yeah. to it's others. It's but either giving very mutations slow. or or Ula. Every time I see Kerbasi and the artwork doesn't help, I think of that tenacious D song. Oh, uh, you're not wrong. My kill bossy sausage just has got to perform. I I say that every time when I hit the when I hit the mutation button. I don't play them often, but when I do, that 
It's tenacious D time. I, I can't blame you. I mean, it could be worse. They also have that colossal chaos spawn whose art confuses me every time I look at it for a split second because I can't tell what's happening. You're talking about the Kuija? Yeah, the the man whose art is him eating a beaky. Poor it, beaky. It is These interesting. It's it's it, you have it, like it looks like it's one creature, but it's not. Yeah. No, it's a it's a clo- it's a chaos spawn. So it's a bunch of random shit put together. Yeah. Ten out of ten. Interesting. No, when we get when we get I love that cards. Card. One thing I'm thinking about: like, what, uh, Ur- what warlord? What warlord would we get? Because we haven't had uh, a fifth. I year. want it. We did, and there is no reason for Red Angel to not be there. Well, that's Give true. That's Red true. Angel. That's true. There is Red Angel. Yeah, that would be fair. Yeah, I'd be I'd be down right. with that. I I have I would have no complaints with Red Angel. I think you're right. Not, yeah. I think not Red only Angel is he a fun like ability. He had a really cool purple card, which we denied as the event reward, so yeah. we can still give it to him. Yep, it could still exist. We could still get him as well, and that was pretty fun. I, I, I way better than Kyrus, and way better than uh, Samus. You know, he was, like, he was like Kyrus, but also he was better, different. He was like Kyrus, yeah. but better. It was weird. He, yeah, because he still held. Kyrus. Yeah, he was pinging for one still, but. It actually rewarded you for pinging instead of just something you can do. Right. Kairos's ping feels like Sanguinius is active. Yeah. Yeah. It's just there. I mean, putting a battle honor on a thirty health warlord, and like if if Kairos could use the one energy, I, I don't know. I I don't know crap about balance. I mean, I'm, yeah. No. If, but, if if instead of like, a battle honor, it was just her ability, and if target dies, put in play. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like right. Because then there's, you know, you have to play around that. You you can't just leave. It's like playing against Ralberon or something. You mm-hmm. can't just leave that, you know, one health troop on the board. But I, but as it stands, for God's sake, like how many times are you going to attack with your two attack thirty health warlord to get your battle honor, and then you get a warp rift? Like warp rift is nice, but it's not game changing. Mm-hmm. Like. It just is one more small, unthreatening target for the enemy to deal with, and there are lots of ways to do it. And she's got high initiative, so her likelihood of having the counterattack is less, which would help right. with her ability and her battle honor, and you know, actually making you know some some progress there first turn. One more thing I love about Corbax: low initiative means consistently getting that counterattack. And there are so many times that somebody throws down a three health troop, they they put down a Jubak or something else that's three health, and they think it's going to stick because they're not paying attention. And you can get a Plague Bearer out, counterattack it, and Korbax face it. He even gets a point of health back. Yep. And you just get your free mutation, or you can Rot Swarm and counterattack and hit it with Korbax, and you are just generating value. I mean, the the counterattack, I mean, it's not, you know, I, I think what do the Iron Warriors have uh, counterattack deal one damage to all enemies, is that yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So it's not that, you know, it's not by any means the best counterattack in the game, but for Korbax specifically, that counterattack doesn't work. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it really, they think they have come up to a good start in the game, and you can swing it hard. I mean, getting a Rot Swarm down counterattacking Corbeck's face, and then suddenly you have two 1-3 unstoppables on the board that are both poisonous. I mean, that's a that's something to think about, because they now don't want to put down their troop that, you know, is going to try to stick around. No, it's not going to, because it's going to get uh, unstoppable poisoned, no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think for the faction especially, it's it's a solid kind. Of, it's not the worst. It's not the best, but it's a very solid uh, counterattack. I've been in that, and like that one, for some reason, the Runestorm counterattack and the Imperial Army counterattack are the ones I forget about the most. Even though I play the Imperial Army all the time, I, I always forget about that 1-1 flanker. I I will always remember the 1-1 flanker simply because of how many times I've fought a low Terabot. I've, I've talked about this several times uh, yeah, on the podcast because yeah. it's my favorite turn one play ever. The bot goes, it's green, I must play it. So the bot will stun you at Ursus Claw. Play um, her ability, because it's a Lotera bot, so there's a 2 3, and then she'll use her counterattack every single time without fault. I've never seen her break stride in this. 
If someone has, please tell me because I need to see it. Yeah, it's bot awesome. counterattack behavior is is not great. The no. uh, Space Wolves campaign recently was demonstrating <laughs> that. They, they love to play their counterattack in times that make no sense at all. And you're like, okay. I've watched Thanks. bots kill their own troops simply because they could afford to play the damage tactic. But it's honestly amazing. Bot AI is a trip and a half. But now that I say that, are there any Runestorm bots? I haven't noticed any. Uh, there, there, used to, there used to be a Kabanda bot, but I don't know if I've seen that in a while. And I think we're due for new bots. Like, we have new warlords. We, we should are. be getting new bots. We should get, like, a dozen new bots. Let's... Well, here's the thing. I don't even care that much about new bots. I want new bot decks. Well, yeah. Give... I think the bots are being restricted to a single deck slot each. I would I like... I think they are... It's, 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 like it's, a, it's a pipe dream. It's a pipe dream, but I would have liked... As a reward for the War Master, they get to make a deck for a bot. And then that, that gets added into the next season. Like, that's what I would... I think that'd be an awesome prize, because then you're running into... The, the bot AI is still going to suck. The bot AI is still not going to play these decks very well. But then you're actually running into some better decks sometimes. You're like, oh, that's a surprise. And, and every month, you'll get a new surprise. You may not run into it all the time. But it's out there. It exists. I would like that. Engagement. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. hey, not only did, did you get the card back for being War Master, but you also got to choose a little something. Maybe you make it a meme just for being, you know, just because like, here it is. Here's my meme back. Maybe you make it a copy of what you won War Master with. Maybe you would just pick your favorite faction. Or maybe you just like, you know what? I would hate to see with Bot AI. I'd hate to see a Bot AI do this. Like, who knows? It could be fun. I don't know. I'm just throwing that idea out there. We're not at plugs yet, but just an idea. Just an idea. That that the plug plug better uh, bot decks this way. Uh, you, we'll get there. We'll get there one day. Uh, but before we do, one before day. we get to plugs, we, we I mean wrap it we gotta up. Rank the, yeah, we got to rank up the, the 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 top. Let's say your top three favorite three Ruin Storm cards. Okay, favorite three Ruin Storm cards. Normally, I just go the legendaries. I'm the legendaries, but in faction where I only like two of the legendaries of five, that's not an option. Oh, shoot. Uh, I gotta give first place to Plague Toad, simply because a double Plague Toad turn one is one of the most oppressive plays you can do, and it physically breaks the spirit of whoever you're fighting. Um, now that I think about it, I think all my favorite cards are actually Nurgle Demons, because I'm gonna say Plague Bear next. Simply because the mutations on kill, if you can drop him while the boards hurt, mm -hmm. you get a bunch of mutations, slap it on him. He's just going to keep healing, depending on which one you choose. You're getting bigger and bigger, and you're just going to gain more mutates. Then I, I'm not going to include the legendaries in this, because like I said, there's only three or two that I like. Uh, I got to give it to that chaos spawn. I the mean, he's a, he's a six, nine for seven. So yeah, he's, yeah he's not... His stats aren't perfect, but he's constantly giving you a mutate, and if you built up some mutates from earlier, you got a big boy. My only problem is he's 7 energy when 7 energy is a turning point nowadays. It's why my word bearers suffered so hard. I can't play my Dark Murder anymore, because I'm either dead or winning by then. And usually it's I'm dead. <laughs> What's your take, Jack? What's your three? So, one of the things I really liked about Ruinstorm as a as a brand new player. I mean, Corbax took me. I, I think I played Corbax first in an event, uh, maybe in like spring of last year, and I I bought the only Warlord I've ever bought in one of those like little you know value pack things where you buy the Warlord in the deck. Um, mm -hmm. I bought Corbax because I just absolutely loved playing as him, and one of the things that really attracted me to him as a brand brand new player was the fact that the commons and rares in the deck really are the backbone of the deck. I got lucky and got some Chaos Furies early on, but I didn't have any legendaries. I didn't have, uh, you know, the Chosen to work with. I didn't have Elatil. Um, I had Minutia Rakshasi, which, <laughs> come on, almost worthless. And so with, with that spirit, I'm going to limit my top three picks to commons only. Mm. And the commons that I think are really worthwhile in this deck. The Demonettes, I, I know they were nerfed, but man, a 4-2 sneak attack with stealth, because if you're playing them early game, they have stealth. There's nothing else on the board. And that sets you up 
for your plague bearer. You can drop a plague bearer and then murder something with demonettes. If you have fallen instead, you can set the fallen out there, murder something with demonettes, and the demonettes are somewhat likely to stick around because they have to deal with the fallen first and it's turn three. Mm-hmm. So I like demonettes. I really do. I, I know they're not like meta competitive as a phenomenal card, but I think Corbacks, yeah. especially, they're, they're a solid card. I, I, I'd say demonettes are still very good. It's just, you know, when you compare them to their former self. Is their issue. I I would love then to again, see this glorious the, past days of Ruin Star. <laughs> then again, God, the entire I, faction is out of its glory days. I know. Uh, I'm I'm selfishly hoping for a, a Raven Guard meta, except just Corvax burping on things. Well, this um, is what this is what hurt me the most. Uh, you got to remember the Eternal Rivalry change happened at the peak of Knights. Yeah, uh, okay. and they were one of the yeah. hardest counter Knights at the time too, because like oh. That's yeah. that's a cool uh, battle cannon. It's gone. What? You know, yeah, yeah, gone. That was right about when I got into the game, so I was definitely not apprised of what was going on in the card collection because I was still like, oh, I got a second D sats. Well, I'm extremely happy. It, um, it is hundred so, percent intentional that they did those changes at that time. I yeah, heard. yeah. I, I I long for a just dominant ruin storm. Um, Path of Blood is another one that has seen value. Again, card creation, like Path of Blood creates itself when you're using it on... I, I don't run two, but just getting one in the hand and you get a couple demons on the board, you can mutate them and you don't lose cards. And for a faction that can't draw, that's really a pretty big advantage. Like, you are going to get some value out of that. I'm turning your plague bearer into a gigantic plague monster or giving ward to your frontline troops. So they have to hit the four, three in the four, three with, with a ward on it becomes a hell of a lot scarier and it's a cheap card. And, and your real, like your issue isn't energy as much as it is just having, you know, cards in your hand. So path of blood being able to stick around. And then, you know, later in the game when you're like, all right, well, I need something else besides Path of Blood. I need a way to draw. I'll slap a mutation on something and draw a card. For three energy, that's not great, but it's not terrible. It's 3.6 Runkin. Um, and then uh, the third one would be Unrestricted Frenzy. Because if you can get some demons out there, you get your Chaos Furies, you get an Elital with a mutation, you get Demon Brutes. Um, just anything where, where you've got two mutated demons on the board, which is not difficult to achieve. Unrestricted Frenzy can be a massive swing. It's one of the few big swing cards I feel like you have. Uh, and and for a common, for three energy, plus one, plus one to all of your board, because face it, all of your board is going to be demons. You're not going to be running cultists. And potentially plus two, plus two to your entire board. Uh, Unrestricted Frenzy can do some work. I've I've had more than a few games where I had kind of a okay situation where it wasn't you know a, a clear win or a clear loss and frenzy comes up and then all of a sudden you have a dominant board that a terror mutation becomes enormously valuable by comparison. Yeah, the, they are they have solid cards in the common tier. A lot of their good ones, blood letters. Uh, most of the corn demons are actually common. Now that I think about that, yeah, I mean, you can, they operate really well with common rare. They're legendaries, as we said. Several of them are just like eh, they're like cool. they're just not great. Like Illitil and Ch- Demon Chosen are your top legendaries. That without you, question, oh, yeah. you don't have to play the other legendaries at all, and you don't have to play both of those. Although I really think you should. And then you're not really playing like as far as chaos neutral legendaries. You could probably squeeze in one or two in there if you could, but really they don't do anything for you. Like the best one yeah, that might do just... something for you is Ecratrez, and even then, that's a little ponderous. But I mean, you don't need it. You know what the best part about this is, Scuff? When talking about neutral chaos legendaries, not once do we mention their demons. No, like the greater demons. No, because the... you don't want to play those. There's no, there's no need to. Like you've got better demons that are going to come on and do better things for you. Uh, even with the mutations, you know the, the, those those legendary greater demons just don't do the same thing for Ruin Storm. Uh, my top three, I would probably say Demon Chosen. I know it's a legendary, but it is the legendary. It's one to get. 
Plague Toads, yeah. as mentioned, and I like Path of Blood too. I I think Path of Blood is just a it's the gift that keeps giving. You know, like you have to be in a hard pinch to run out of it. You know, or to not have anything to put it on, and then if that's the case, then you know, you're kind of not looking you're great right. anyways. But yeah. you yeah. can just get so much value out of that card and keep putting down demon, give it a path of blood, like late game, like like ah, you, they know that you're going to put a troop, and you're going to get at least one mutation out of it. And if you happen to get other mutations from other cards, it's just you know icing on the cake. But uh, those are probably just the top three I would go. I, runner up for me is Chaos Furies. I do like Chaos Furies on curve, especially just even if they get, you know, Survivor or they get the the Talons. Like those are my favorites with them. Just like all right, I'm gonna be hitting you for for something next turn. It's it's coming. Get ready for it. Yeah, and Plot yeah. Threat is a big part of the uh, strategy for the game. Even even throwing Cleave on something, I mean, you you can have a lot of. I don't know, things that they're forced to deal with. Warp Rift is the ultimate implied threat card. Like, if you do not deal with this card very early on, like, go out of your way to deal with it, I'm going to be throwing down free demonettes. Mm -hmm. Unless you, if you can get a Warp Rift to stay, I would say, for four turns, and you have that nine energy starting hand, only then will I see him playable. This is... Axel J. Manning's highly specific scenarios where a shit card becomes good. If that happens, will you host the next All Alpha Legion tournament? God, I'm so into that. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't give me that shit. That was a fun. Hey, listen, that was a fun tournament. I had a blast. I don't know about everybody else, but I did. The key part about that is I don't know about everybody else. <laughs> the thing is, all tournaments are All Alpha Legion tournaments because everybody is Alpharius. That's. I mean, that's he's it. not. He's not wrong, but in this specific scenario, you are, and it was miserable. <laughs> I just, I watched from the sidelines in horror. Oh, it's not as bad as a current Crucible. I'm going I'm to just plug Crucible real quick. We have a Crucible boss up. It's Dorn in his Reckoning, and you have to play Alpha Legion when you fight him. Here's a new fact today. Alpha Legion has a big disadvantage against Imperial Fists. And you may be like, well, that's unfair. A, it's a Crucible. Y yes. Uh, B, he has no other chance against any other character in the game. When we're even as a crucible boss, Dorn, it's true. It's true. Yeah, we you you witnessed some of our testing scuff. You saw what was happening. Yep, he does not work. He's it's a uh, shame because he's such a neat. Yeah, he, he he's got the three attack. He is he's now he's got a, a a reduced cost for the stone gauntlet coming in at three energy. Okay, you know, like it's but uh, yeah, the Alpha Legion have a hard matchup there because. So what if you stun my turrets? So what? You can't put secret orders on turrets. So that limits like half your game plan, and you're certainly not going to sit there and make traps against turrets. What are you crazy? So <laughs> it should be interesting. You know, I'm sure somebody will take it down at some point. You can come up with some some builds and make it work, but they're not going to be your typical builds. The That's faster how... you kill them, folks, the more uh, the sooner we get more fun warlords. Yeah, and. It, whoever wins first, if I'm correct, they get a th is it a thousand gold and a legendary of the choice. I think it's just a legendary. Oh, okay, well, that's still worth a thousand gold. So it is. I mean, it's I technically, mean, technically worth it's more worth, than or it's three thousand. Yes. Yeah. That's a high. Three thousand is a guaranteed legendary. It's worth it, folks. If you are if you need a legendary, this might be. I would say the easiest one, if not for the Alpha League restriction. Glorious Alpha Legion. And if people really just hate the idea of this one, uh, we have to get through the more boring ones so we get to some fun ones. So we have Malkador and Crawl eventually going to happen. Oh, Malkador. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Malkador lately. Malkador is my favorite warlord in the game. He's he's fun. I don't mind him. I don't I play just, him often, but he's fun. I like the the kind of mind game that you can play with the other people, like trying to yes. figure out what they're going to do with and force I, them into things. I find the mind game becomes lesser and lesser the higher you move up because people's curve gets so tight where it's like this is the only card he could play. Click. This is but the for only me, card he could. Play. Yeah, see for Click. me that's the thing. It's not just the mind game. It's the hand knowledge. Like the hand knowledge. Now I'm like okay, he's got it. He'll play it. And I also know that at this turn he's going to play that card or he'll have that card to play. So I'll be prepared for it. Like Malkador is is 
one of my top five like just the play style like that's my pl- that's my preferred play style is that that thinking and plotting it the game doesn't really favor that too much right now you know but yeah. i like that the most so it is very fun i always thought there was a shame about how sanguineous his abilities the hand knowledge you gain is a singular card right you're like there it is okay what about it that would just I, you I spent energy like it should show you a spread of cards at least. Like a good here's three random cards from their hand. It's not even a one energy ability, is it? Is it a two energy? No, no, it's one energy. Is it one? They could not just they could not justify giving it's so it to bad. Two. It's so bad. Like you it, it might as well just one damage to yourself. <laughs> you know the ability. You know what the ability reads as. The ability reads as we were gonna give him berserk originally, so this is an ability, so you don't have to attack. But then we didn't give him berserk. If they would have given him, like, if it's a tactic or if it's a troop or, like, some sort of conditional gain precognition to then turn. I, I, I wouldn't want precog, but maybe even healer or survivor. Yeah. Or even a draw card. Something. Because he's suffering from Just all three something. of those issues. Give him something. Give the Let's be real here. Sanguinius mm-hmm. isn't, like, killing the meta right now, boys. No, not at all. I don't, I don't think he ever has. No, he's like the third or fourth of the uh, angels. Blood. Yeah, I, I would, I would. Mm, would he be third? I think he would. I think he's fourth. No, no fourth. Yeah, fourth. I was gonna say I forgot. As Cleon's doing really good right now. Is that yeah, I, I um, played without a game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. He's, he's just one tier around. Yeah, he's just wow. Poor Sango. He could probably be really good if Requiem. Uh, triggered, uh, I mean, the mission triggered on your Requiem as well, because then you could have some very highly specific builds. And he has a very fun mission deck where with Blade and Reckoning, if your troop dies beside you, I think that's a plus four attack. Uh, so that's cool. But you gotta get there. <laughs> that's the issue. Four Blood Angels, simultaneously overstatted to hell while being understatted. I like that. Ascalon, I I know Ascalon is a super RNG warlord and is probably not going to be in High Terra, but like he is probably one of the best warlords in High Terra right now. Is he really? I like I uh, I don't. Know. I know several people fucking on ladder with him. Yeah, he's he has absurd burst potential where you can just put out a shocking amount of damage with the, some of his, like, Dawnbreakers and Last Stand. And, like, I want to point out, and Sc- Janus and just crush. Scuff has always been a... Uh, uh, what was the word I'm looking for? I was going to say missionary of uh, the Ascalon. A proponent I guess that's of, of the Ascalon since proponent. day one, yes. It's you true. Have been. I mean, I and, and when I when I did the Amit deck too, I, meant, I mentioned the same thing. Like I had decks for both Amit and Ascalon in mind when we were fighting for both of them. They were both completely different. But it's like, man, this guy's got frontline. He can protect like rec, like oh, Requiem. Okay, that's that's let's do that for Amit. This guy is all about the landing, getting that last stand, getting that landing going. He can draw cards, like. He's got the worst emos, but I played with the sound off, so that never really bothered me. Same, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. He's, and he's got unstoppable to boot. Like that's that's the that's the final extra, extra little thing. So because some of those games, like it comes down like, oh, they, no front line's going to save you this time because I can just hit you for two and follow up with a, a tactic and we're good to go. See, that's why I love uh, Sanguinius because like, ah, yes, hide behind your cover. I have blade on and I can fly. Yep. Fly. So it's very satisfying. Well, we're talking about Blood Angels. I know you played. You're playing Ascalon quite a bit, and before that, I think you're running the Raldorons, uh on your channel. But do you want to plug your channel? You want to plug anything else there? Yeah. So I uh, I've been making YouTube videos about Legions. Um, I've been I've been off the channel for a little bit. I got some just general disruption in in the real world. But the uh, yeah, come come check me out on YouTube if you'd like. I'm Automatic Jack with an underscore in there. Uh, I'm gonna put some Malkador games up pretty soon. I've been working on this Malkador deck and really really enjoying it. And otherwise, I mean, yeah, that's that's most of what I got to plug. The my plea to uh, 
to Everguild is to change the order of the loading screen messages so that you are not boarding the Thunderhawk and then gearing up for combat, because that's ridiculous. You would not do it in that order. Mm-hmm. I, I have strong opinions about that. <laughs> you, you gear up for combat, and then you board the goddamn Thunderhawk. The Thunderhawk's got where all the gear. Like, it's not on the ship. Yeah. No, no, it is not where you have the gear. <laughs> you, you do not bring your yeah. awful bag of gear onto the Thunderhawk and then dress... In the gunship, that is ludicrous. When I play baseball, I go I, to the I mean, to and be then fair, I put on my uniform. That's what I do. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure okay. training in the sparring yeah. cages yeah. is after gearing up, right? I, I just, yeah. Yeah. and that's so, the other thing. That's insult yes, to injury. You're yes. exactly right. Like all, like it would be better if these lines were completely randomized, but they follow a pattern that's wrong. Yeah, it kills me. It's, they get they. They board the Thunderhawk to go to their armory to armor up in full kit to then just go spar. To, I to guess? go spar in the training place? cage in the Thunderhawk, which I mean, I've it's never like heard of that. You, you don't know how big a last time. Listen, the, the Erebus staff, like things you can't unsee once that's, you've seen them. This, this is the truth. This is, yeah. this is 40k. Where this, we don't know how big a Thunderhawk is. One author may say it's four times the size it actually is. Right? Uh, you know, I read a story about a backflipping Thunderhawk. <laughs> Oh no! There, the you joke. There's a book where a, I think it's a Reaver Titan is mentioned at 200 meters tall, which, a uh, warlord is like barely a hundred, I think. So it was it was, some it was juiced up. It was a juiced up Reaver Titan. That that is ridiculously big. I, I mean, to find exactly I've actually, I've actually it. heard that it's pronounced Thunder Hawk. Um, Thunder. Th- that's actually the way it's supposed I, to be pronounced. Not. Uh, you know. I disagree. <laughs> no, I, I don't think we agree. There's, there's what you said is a crime. <laughs> it, it is. It's a crime to my tongue. Thunder Hawk. I feel like I'm from, from the space from, from, trying to explain. You know, what I, that I was just gonna say yes. Welcome to I mean, it's probably Hawk. still better voice actor than the first Lehman Ross voice actor. Uh, I mean, they've been changing some of the voice actors. Right? We got new. We got uh, new Bolvi. Is that right? Uh, we got no, Bolvi Alter. I thought it was Other who got his voice. Other changed. got his I change, but I think I thought we got a new Bolvi voice change as well. Um, we got Bolvi Alter coming up. By the time you hear this, that's already will be out. By the time you hear this, it, it is it is already out, and it is one of the best alt arts. It looks one of the worst really alt-arts. good. I gotta say, it does look really good. It's a shame that it is for Bullvi, but uh, you know, hey, if somebody might see it and just be like, you know what, I love Space Wolves, I'm doing it. So, kudos to you. Um, actually, got anything else to plug? I'm gonna do the usual. I'm gonna plug our boy Doran. That's Drew Lee Clark on Instagram. He's my buddy. He does art. He did me and Scott's profile pictures, and you know, he does commissions. He's a great artist. Hit him up. All right. Well, we were talking about gold earlier. I'm going to plug the both the decklist contest, which by the time I hear this, the April decklist contest will have ended, which was my first legions. That is a monthly contest that takes place where you can get a thousand gold for being the winner. 500 gold for being second place, 300 for being third place. All you do is build a deck list that matches the theme of the month, send that to me, and boom, you get gold. Like, I haven't figured out what May's theme is going to be, so keep your ears and eyes posted for that. Um, and also, the, the, the monthly Steam stream um, that will be taking place, I think, next week for uh, April. So, April 30th, look for the steam stream that will be a couple hours i'll be on steam just playing games and i'll have some challenge if you beat me with the challenge then you get a, a, a promo code i'll have three promo codes to give away for a thousand gold each easy peasy all you have to do is play and win and usually like it's like play and show me that you've got a, a card from galaxy of flames i think i'm going to change that a little bit to make it a little even more easy I just don't know what. Like, beat me with a 30 hit point warlord. You know, like, pff, get a starter pack. If you, Everybody's got Loken, at the very least. So, I like to keep it broad, like to make it a little bit easy. My, listen, I want to give the gold away. I want people to get the thousand gold. That's the whole point. So, yeah, keep that's it. That's what you want us to believe, Spog. That's, that's what I want you to believe. Yeah, two hours later, I'm like, no, you'll never have it. I have all the promo codes. Uh, but yeah, sitting on a pile of gold. The the promo code that is that's the Steam stream is on the thirtieth. Keep your eyes posted for the decklist contest, 
and deck slots because we need the premium okay. deck slots. We, we're here. We're here and we need deck slots because we don't have like, we have three warlords coming up. We're over capacity. We have 140 warlords plus because who knows what we're getting after this Titan event. Uh, we've got the Ultramarines, the Alpha Legion, and the Dark Le the Dark Angels to add to the game. Um, Dark Legion. Do it, do it, every guild. Do it for do it for Mama. Do it, do it for Mama, and just give us the deck slots. Scuffy boy wants his deck slots. I, listen, uh, I I was talking to the every guild's moms. Uh, I'm I'm friends with them. I have tea with them every Sunday, and they and, also uh, agree that they would like their their sons and or daughters to add deck slots to the game because they think that that is what the players want. I, you know what? I don't doubt you. <laughs> don't disagree I, with Mama. Sure. Don't do it. Don't. Shh. Sure. This happened. All right, I, this is now. Listen, I, I believe Mother's Day is coming up. So that would be a great Mother's Day present ever guild. Do it for your mama. A Mother's Day <laughs> present for Scuff will be giving deck slots. Yes. I, you know what? Sure, I agree. Yes, I, I uh, support this idea. Well, let's go, some... deck slots. Let's do it. We need slots for the slots. Incidentally, guys. you could just remove the slots, and it would make me happy. Uh no, that's something that you do for Father's Day. That's a different. At least thing. they don't charge you for them. Yeah, the, the, the every guild dads <sighs> are in the garage, looking very disapproving of their children's uh, career paths. You know, yeah, so stuff. <laughs> Answering may be bad because maybe Ever Guild will get bad ideas. But if they started selling deck slots, would you buy them? Uh, or are we talking for for real game currency? Or are we talking for in game for currency? real money? <laughs> if there's a deal, a I, I might take out. Are they going to be alt art deck slots? Are these alt arts? Oh man, are they like premium deck slots? That I take. You it. know, if you could premium slot, so no matter what, it would. I don't know how they would do that, actually, now that I say that out loud. Uh, I guess a you know, card back would be guaranteed premium. An alt art deck slot, and then instead of, like, horizontal, it's like, or, you know, it's like, instead of vertical, it's horizontal. And so, like, you get, like, like you get, like, a widescreen warlord. Ooh, I like that. that. No, what I like to imagine instead, when you said that, is a card's flipped. So the guy's hand is stacked up horizontally. It's, it's like, it's like letterbox really format. Weird. Oh, that'd be awful. Oh, that could be good. That could be sure. good. I'd be no, done with that. Scott, you're the kind of guy to show up to a card tournament and actually have your deck horizontal. I'm that guy who's got, like, full tournament. land art. Uh, you know, it's not necessary. But why'd you do it? For show. <laughs> like, that's, that's... No, you gotta be the guy to argue that the art gives your card a bonus. It uh, has it, wings. So it's uh, there, there was... There were actually, I played example. some games. Uh, there played some games that didn't really do a bonus, but they actually did a uh, deck a uh, raw deal. WWE raw deal actually had I think it was either Ted DiBiase or JBL, whose you know gimmick is they're like you know rich millionaires, and their whole gimmick was like banking around having foiled and high rarity cards in your deck. So it was, <laughs> it was like wow, this is just the this is the win more like guy. This is the money money deck, literally. I gotta respect it. Yeah, you know what. You gotta, you gotta respect the the million dollar man and the million dollar okay. belt. Not Virgil. Yeah, Virgil doesn't get respect. I mean, that's also fair. That's it. So I'm, I, that's a long winded plug of saying deck slots. Do it. Do it every oh. guild. Well, automatic Jack, thank you for joining us tonight. To talk about the ruin storm, the uh, the pitfalls, the 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 dilemmas, the issues, and at the same time champion the uh the, the power of corbex and i think if anything else hopefully people take that away from this episode that that is something to was, still consider yeah i was gonna hey. say the takeaway of this episode is nurgle is the only good one. uh it's just a fact of life yeah thanks for having me i i love my boy corbex and i love the podcast and combining the two is a fantastic opportunity all right all right boys all right well that's it everybody uh, have a good night Bye. Bye. A magnificent ending. This has been another episode of the Warp Chatter Podcast. Thank you for listening. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shh. It's over. Don't fight it.